Hello, everyone. Thank you all for attending our webinar session today titled Preparing to List and Adding a Single Product. My name is John Gorospi, and I'm part of the learning and development team at Seller University. Today, we are joined by Ariel and Bryce. They will be facilitating and moderating today's webinar session. Before I hand it over to them so they can introduce themselves, I would like to cover a couple of housekeeping notes. Before we begin, you will notice that your individual microphones are muted. To really extract the benefits from today's session, please silence all devices that may come as a distraction. We want to make sure that you do not miss anything pertinent or important. Also, at the end of today's session, you will receive a brief survey asking you about your experience on today's webinar. This will be your opportunity to provide us with your feedback and share any topics you wish for us to cover in the future. So without further delay, Ariel and Bryce, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Welcome to our training, Preparing to List and Adding a Single Product. In the next 25 minutes, we're going to cover two key topics, preparing to list a product on Amazon and adding a single product to your inventory. By the end of this presentation, you'll know what product information you need before you list an item and get step-by-step -step instructions for adding single products one by one on Seller Central. We'll be offering a part two to this training on Seller University. That session will cover two advanced listing topics, creating product variations and adding products to your inventory in bulk. Throughout today's session, we'll be offering additional resources you can use to learn more about the listing process. If you need to grab a pen and paper to take notes, grab them now. You'll also be able to replay this presentation later on Seller University. Search for the title, Preparing to List and Adding a Single Product. At the end of today's presentation, we'll take 15 minutes to answer your questions. If you think of a question during any portion of our session, enter it into the chat box and we'll save it for the Q&A. Here's an overview of what we're learning today. What the components of a product detail page are and how they help customers make buying decisions who contributes the information found on product detail pages, what product IDs are, why you'll usually need one to list, and how to find or obtain one, what the difference is between matching existing products and creating new product listings, and how to add a single product to your inventory. Let's get started with an overview of the product detail page. If you've ever shopped or browsed in the Amazon store, you're already familiar with the customer facing page. It's the place buyers go to review product information and images and to make purchasing decisions. You might not yet know that every product has its own unique detail page. Whether it's sold by one or multiple sellers, a product's information is always housed in one place. We combine listings in this way to make it easier for customers to find, compare, and purchase products. We also combine all product variations onto the same detail page. A product might come in multiple sizes, colors, or patterns, but each version is available on the same page. This helps customers choose between different versions of a product. You might be wondering where Amazon gets the information and images that appear on product detail pages. If it's a product sold by one of our millions of sellers, we get them from you. Before you add an item to the Amazon catalog, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with what high quality product information looks like. Any brand owner or brand qualified seller can contribute to the detail page of a product they sell if that item is enrolled in brand registry. All sellers can contribute to detail pages for generic products they sell that aren't enrolled in a brand recognized by Amazon. We review the information and images submitted and post new products and updates to existing pages within 24 hours. 
we check each submission carefully to help ensure accuracy, consistency, and compliance. In addition to the product information contributed by qualified sellers, each seller who lists an item in the Amazon store gets to provide detail specific to their individual offer. That always includes pricing information and can include a note about the physical condition of the item being sold or information like handling times and shipping options. Offer specific information is visible to buyers within a product detail page when they select a specific listing. There are five key components of a product detail page. The title or product name, images, about this item bullets, product description, the featured offer box. Let's take a quick look at each component and a few rules for submitting high quality content. First, any product you sell in the Amazon store needs a title or product name. A good title describes the product clearly and succinctly and helps drive traffic to your listing. You'll want to follow four basic rules for product titles. Include the brand and product type. Capitalize the first letter of each word that isn't a preposition, conjunction, or article. Be as concise as possible. Give customers all the information they need and nothing else. And finally, for product variations or child products, include color, size, and other descriptive information. You don't want to include this kind of information for main or parent products, which should be generic. If you don't yet know the difference between child and parent products, don't worry. We'll define these terms soon. Let's look at two quick example titles. A good title for a grocery item would be Native Forest Organic Classic Coconut Milk, 12.5 ounce cans, count of 12. This title name names the brand Native Forest, product type, Organic Classic Coconut Milk, size 12 and a half ounces, and quantity 12. That's everything a buyer needs to know before they make a purchase with no extra non-descriptive information. For an apparel product with variations, a good title for a parent product would be Crocs Beach Clog. That's just the brand Crocs and product type Beach Clog without any of the variation information needed for the actual sellable child products. For a child product, a good title might add lime green for color and men's size eight to nine for size. Before you upload images for a product, take a look at the appropriate category style guide on Seller Central. Once again, you can find the downloadable guide by searching style guide, then selecting the help page inventory file templates, style guides, and browse tree guides. Images are the second key component of a product detail page. They grab the attention of customers and provide visual information about a product. Every product detail page on Amazon requires at least one main image, which is displayed as customers search. We recommend adding other images and a video to show the product in use at different angles or with different features engaged. You'll want to follow five basic rules for good images. Show the product against a white background. Have the product fill 85% or more of the frame. Use professional photographs whenever possible. Use images that are 1,600 pixels or more on the longest side to enable Zoom, and upload JPEG files if possible, or TIFF or static GIF files if necessary.
Here are two quick image examples for a tote bag and an Adirondack chair. Both highlight the product using a white background, fill the frame, and are large enough to allow the customer to zoom in on details and design. Before you submit a title for a product, make sure you review the appropriate category style guide for complete details. On Seller Central for style guide, then select Help Page, Inventory File Templates, Style Guides, and Browse Tree Guides. The style guides are midway down the page. The next key component of a product detail page is the About This Item section, which provides customers with top line product features and qualities. When drafting content for this section, follow three basic rules. Write bullets that are 100 characters or fewer. Just like titles, less is usually more. Write using fragments. There's no need to write full sentences. Capitalize the first letter of each bullet. Unlike titles, you don't need to capitalize each word. Here are two example about this item bullets that highlight features of a coffee maker. Programmable, set a time for your next craft up to 24 hours in advance. Keeps coffee warm. Stainless steel craft keeps coffee at the ideal temperature for up to two hours. Notice that both bullets start with a short summary, then offer a longer description. That format works well for many items in the Amazon store. The fourth key component of a product detail page is the product description. This is your 2000 word opportunity to help the customer imagine owning the product. Describe major features like size and style in detail or illustrate how the product is used. You'll want to follow three basic rules. Use complete sentences. You'll still want to be concise, but should use full sentences broken into short paragraphs. Include dimensions, care instructions, and warranty information and discuss the features and benefits of the product, focusing on unique properties. Let's read one brief excerpt from an effective product description. Thick, heavy duty rubber polymer with ridges prevents dirt, mud, water, and debris from creeping onto your carpet floor. These mats keep the front and entire rear of your car's floor clean with leaving no gaps. They're shaped to fit the contours of most vehicles. Odorless and non-toxic, these mats are safe for even the smallest passengers in your car. This description does a good job positioning the reader as a user of the product. We know how the car mat feels, what it's made of, and that it's specifically designed to cover the entire floor. The fifth and final key component of a product detail page is the feature offer box. Customers see an individual seller's listing information in this space. They can use it to buy the product directly or add it to their shopping cart for later. The listing that appears as the featured offer depends on several factors, including price, availability, and the customer's shipping address. All professional sellers who meet certain performance-based requirements are eligible to have their offers listed as the feature offer. To learn more about the featured offer, including seller eligibility requirements, search Featured Offer on Seller Central and select from various help pages. Now that you know what customers see when they shop for your products, let's talk about what you'll need in order to actually list an item on Amazon. In many cases, you'll be adding products to your inventory that are already in the Amazon catalog. The only product information you usually need to make a match that way is a product ID. You'll also usually need a product ID when adding items not yet in the Amazon store catalog. 
Before we dive into the listing process and other types of product information you need while creating a product detail page, let's quickly review what a product ID is and where you can find or obtain one. Product IDs are part of a universal system called GTIN, or the Global Trade Identification Number System. This system is used by Amazon and many other manufacturers, retailers, and businesses. It's managed by an international organization called Global Standard One, or GS1 for short. GTINs ensure that products are uniquely identified while being bought and sold. They also help track and sort items in transit. Each GTIN pairs with a unique barcode, which makes product IDs scannable. Most products sold in the Amazon store use one of the following GTINs, Universal Product Code, or UPC, International Standard Book Number, or ISBN, European Article Number, or EAN, or Japanese Article Number, or JAN. UPCs, ISBNs, EANs, and JANs vary in length, but each act as a unique identifier. Most product categories sold in the Amazon store require a specific GTIN type. In many cases, it'll be a UPC. It's important to note that a GTIN is different from an ASIN and a SKU. While a GTIN is a registered universally recognized product ID used throughout international commerce, ASINs and SKUs are Amazon and seller specific. An ASIN or Amazon Standard Identification Number is an automatically assigned number we use to identify and track products in the Amazon store catalog. A SKU, or stock keeping unit, is a seller-specific number that you can use internally to help identify and track inventory in other systems. You'll encounter all three numbers while selling on Amazon, but your GTIN is the number you'll use most often to list products. Depending on the product you're listing, you might need to locate an existing GTIN, obtain a new one, or apply for an exemption. If your product has a barcode on its packaging, you can find the GTIN above or below. If you can't find a barcode, you can contact the product's manufacturer and request the GTIN. If you manu manufacture the product yourself and you don't yet have a GTIN, you can purchase one from GS1 at www gs1.org. In rare circumstances, a product might not require a GTIN. This can occur if you're selling private label or handmade products, or if you're selling products, parts, or bundled products. To learn more about applying for a GTIN exemption, search on Seller Essential for our help page, how to list products that do not have a product ID. You can also find more information about GTINs, including requirements by product category by searching for GTIN or product ID. Let's move to the process for listing products on Amazon. There are two basic types of products you can list, existing and new. When you match an existing list product listing, you aren't providing product information, but are simply adding your offer to a pre-existing detail page. You'll provide pricing and quantity information and can enter information about sales, handling time, and shipping. When you create a new product listing, you'll need to provide full product information, which will be used to generate a new product detail page. You'll also provide information for your specific offer. Many sellers match items on a regular basis. Brand owners and brand qualified sellers can also create new listings for products enrolled in Amazon's brand registry. 
If an item is generic and isn't part of an enrolled brand, any seller can create a product detail page for it. If you're unsure whether the product you want to sell is existing or new, don't worry. The listing process is designed to help verify your product status on Amazon. Whether you're matching or creating product listings, there are two basic processes for adding items to your inventory, one by one and in bulk. We're only going to cover the process for listing products one by one today. All sellers, both individual and professional, can use this method. Professional sellers can also add products to their inventory in bulk. If you're interested in learning more about this faster, more efficient listing method, please join us for the next webinar in this series. Both individual and professional sellers are welcome to attend. Let's go through the process for adding a single product step-by-step. Step. You'll begin by selecting inventory from the main menu on Seller Central, then clicking add a product. On the add a product page, enter the product ID into the search bar. This can be any GTIN, like a UPC, ISBN, EAN, or JAN. If necessary, you can also enter a product's ASIN or another ID paired with descriptive information like brand or product name. Your search results will automatically populate on the next screen. If you find your product, select a condition for the item you're selling, new, used, or another option, and then click the Sell This Product button. You'll be brought to a new page to enter information about your offer, including your price and quantity. You'll also select whether you want to ship the product directly to your customer or have Amazon ship it for you through our Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA program. Although it's not required, we encourage you to enter a seller SKU for your offer. This can help you compare your inventory records and other systems with what's listed on Seller Central. If you leave this field blank, we'll assign an arbitrary alphanumeric SKU for you. After all your offer information is complete, click the Save and Finish button to match your offer to the product. Once submitted, your offer should appear on the product detail page within 15 minutes. If you can't find your item when you're searching when you search using the Add a Product page, you'll need to provide full product information to create a new detail page. You'll also provide information about your offer. Keep in mind that in order to create a new detail page for a product enrolled in Amazon's brand registry, you need to be the product's brand owner or a brand qualified seller. To start the process, you can either click the link, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon below the search bar, or you can click the create a new listing link next to your search results. On the next page, you'll select a product you'll select a product category or product type for your item. You can either search using key terms or browse categories. If you search, enter product names or descriptors like shoes, basketball, or kids toys in the search bar, then select the appropriate category from the results. If you browse, select the overarching category for your product, then select each subcategory to narrow the results. For example, you might select clothing, shoes, and jewelry, then men, watches, and watch bands. Click the Select Category button next to the subcategory, most closely matching your product. If you see a lock and Learn More button next to a category, that means sellers need to apply for approval before listing the product type on Amazon. Click the button to get more information. Once you've selected your product category, you'll be brought to a new page with multiple tabs. This is where you'll enter full information for your product. Tabs and fields marked in red indicate that required information is still outstanding. After completing each tab, click the Finish and Save button to submit your entries. If the Finish and Save button is grayed out, 
check the tab for missing entries or errors. Start by entering vital info, which will likely include a product ID or GTIN, as well as a product name. It can also include brand name, department, and a variety of other fields depending on the product category. Next, enter information about your offer. This is the same information you enter when matching an existing product. On the Images tab, upload between one and nine pictures for your product. Remember to use professional images with a white background with the product filling at least 85% of the frame. Once you have entered all required product information, click Advanced View and consider adding optional and preferred details on the new tabs that appear. Remember, the more high quality information you provide, the better informed your customers will be while making purchasing decisions. Optional and preferred product details can also make your items easier for customers to find in the Amazon store. On the Compliance tab, you can enter product safety and compliance information. If your product contains or is packed with batteries, is classified as a pesticide by a government organization, or is subject to dangerous goods regulations, you'll enter that information here. On the Description tab, you can provide a product description and key product features. Your key product features will appear as the About This Item bullets on the product detail page. You can use the Keyword tab to view and submit search terms for your product. These don't appear on the detail page, but are used to direct customer searches. Finally, on the More Details tab, you can enter a variety of other product information, much of which will fill the detail page. This is where a product ID or GTIN exemption reason is listed. It's also where item dimensions and weight are entered. Once you click Save and Finish on each tab, your information will be submitted for review and your new product detail page will appear within 24 hours. If any questions arise about your submission, you'll also be notified within 24 hours. Congrats for completing our training on preparing to list and how to list products one by one. We appreciate your attention and will now take your questions. Okay, thanks for that, Ariel. And thanks to all the attendees who have submitted questions throughout the webinar. Please feel free to continue submitting questions as they come up. So we'll go ahead and start with the first one. Uh, my question is, when I add a product, it says currently not available. Why might this be? Great question. When it comes to adding a product and then it says the status is currently not available, it could be for a multitude of reasons. Um, I would first say to check the status on the left-hand side, like you did, where it says not available. It might also have a different descriptor there that can give you a clue or, and more information. But I recommend you selecting the edit button on the right-hand side of the listing under your manage my inventory. There it will show you a lot of different information and it can tell you exactly what information might be missing. There might be an error in your actual listing that you can adjust, um, or it might say that you need approval for that uh, product listing when it comes to brand or category approval. So I would select edit and go from there. You can also, if you have further questions, create a case with seller, uh, seller support and they should be able to uh, answer any further questions um, it, since I don't have full information. Great. And the next question is, uh, when a customer puts an item in their cart, is it no longer available to anyone else? No. Whenever a customer puts an item in their cart or they select that they'd like to save that item for later, it's still available to everyone else. Um, the only time that a product is not available to another customer that might have it in their box is if the inventory is completely em uh, empty and uh, they've actually made the purchase and it's gone through on their payment card. Awesome, thank you. And where can you find an ASIN for a product? 
Great question. An ASIN, like I said in the presentation, is an automatically generated number through Amazon. So when you create your product listing, you'll be able to see the ASIN under your inventory, and it should start with the B, right under the product title in your inventory listing. Great. How can I add a paperback version of a book to a listing that does not have one available? Great question. You'll want to be sure that you're not adding it to the listing that's already created since it's a different version of the book. Um, what I would do is create a new listing with that ISBN number and be sure in the description when you're creating that new listing to indicate that the product listing is a, hard, a hardback book. Perfect. Can we use a resellable GS1? Um, I would recommend you getting all of your uh, GS1 product IDs from GS1. I would not reuse any sort of GTIN uh, number. I would not recommend to do that. I would purchase new um, GTIN numbers through GS1.org. Um, and if they're um, also offering resellable ones, you can do that. But I would always recommend for seeing if you can get uh, brand new. Uh, GTIN or EPC numbers. Great. And the next question, what is the featured offer and how does the featured offer affect me? Great question. The featured offer, like I explained in um, the PowerPoint, is going to be the option where sellers um, can put that product directly into their cart. So whatever, whichever seller has the featured offer at that time, they're getting the sale when a customer selects add to cart. And there's gonna be a multitude of different factors when it comes to what, who gets the featured offer. And I would highly recommend looking into different factors such as making sure that your pricing is competitive, looking at are you offering the best shipping option to your customers. I would highly recommend using our FBA Fulfillment by Amazon program to offer customers prime two-day shipping. I would also look at the amount of inventory that you have on hand, making sure that you don't go out of inventory um, ever, and other factors similar to that. How many reviews that you have for your store, et cetera. Great. Next question is, how do we go about pricing our items and adding a shipping price? Yeah, I think pricing your items is definitely going to be first off a business choice, depending on your own margins. Um, so based off of your margin, whatever is the best uh, business decision for you. Um, and then I would also, like I said, in order to really focus on that featured offer, um, try to be as competitive as possible um, compared to the other sellers on the listing. Um, so that's the first thing I would recommend. Can you repeat the second part of that question for me, Bryce? Um, I think you actually hit on all of it. So okay, we'll go perfect. to the next uh, question. Um, how can I see what products are gated? Yeah, this is a really great question. So I recommend going to the inventory tab and then manage your inventory, uh, the first drop down. And there you can search for the exact product that you're wanting to sell on Amazon um, or the one that you're wanting to check if you need approval for that brand or category search that product. Next to the product, once you find it, you'll see a hyperlink um, that states um, any sort of listing limitations. Select that link and it will tell you exactly what approvals are needed for that item. So it will tell you if you need a brand approval or a category approval. And then from there, you can click next and see which requirements uh, you need in order to submit um, the correct information for uh, uh, applying for that brand or category. Awesome. And the next question is, how do you approach duplicate listings? In other words, which one should I choose for my product? Um, if it's the exact same listing, um, I would recommend choosing, I mean, first off, taking a look at the bullet points in every part of the listing um, to make sure that it's um, you're listing the exact same product and making sure that the same dimensions, the same weight, everything like that. Um, 
so that customer is the best customer experience so that we're making sure that we're giving our customers the exact product that you uh, have on hand um, if the um, let's say the bullet points and the product description and detailed information is all exactly the same, I would recommend you choosing um, whichever listing best suits you. Um, I don't think that there's a listing uh, that would be better or worse than another. Okay, and the next question is, I tried listing a new product and it, requ and it requested a GTI and exemption and it never showed up. Why might that be? I um, would definitely reach out to seller support um, to double check on that um, and look in your case log as well to see if they responded to you and maybe you did get approval and um, uh, you just didn't get the notification. But um, I would definitely, you know, go go through the I got process. It. I got it and I watched it. I think it's over. Um, Will I be able to access it again and get the audio? Can you say that one more time? I, I watched the video and it was just questions and words and I got no audio, but will I be able to access this to watch this again with the audio? Yes, so we will have, um, a, we are recording this, so um, you will definitely be able to get access to this video uh, after. Okay, and how will I do that, do you know? <laughs> yeah, I think that this will be available to you, um, that it might be emailed out to you after this session, um, and then you'll also be able to see it through Seller University. Okay, super. Um, I'm not real savvy with the, the computer, so. <laughs> All right, let's get to the last question here. Um, I'm planning to sell a product that I own. I don't have brand registry, but want to put the product brand in the listing. How do I go about that? That's a really great question. Um, I would go through a process, um, a different brand approval process, if you haven't gone through brand registry yet and you're planning to, um, but you don't wanna list the product under generic, which is definitely an option. You can definitely go through and create a new product listing with the generic brand name. You could also uh, send a message to uh, to seller support and send them a, a image of your product um, with the brand name on it, tell them your br exact brand name and the category you would like to list it in, and they can work with you to see if they, you can get approval to create a new product listing on Amazon without having to go through the full brand registry process at that time. Great. Thank you so much, Ariel. That wraps up our Q&A. Awesome. Thanks again for joining today's session. To learn more about listing products one by one, search on Seller Central for our help page, Create and Manage Inventory, which provides a full catalog of resources. As a reminder, if you'd like to learn how to create product variations on Amazon or how to list in bulk, join us for part two of our listings webinar series. We'll cover both of these topics in depth. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store. Hello everyone, John here again. A big thank you to Ariel and Bryce for facilitating and moderating today's webinar. Also, thank you to all who attended and participated. As mentioned in the beginning, you will be receiving a brief survey. Your feedback and opinion are greatly appreciated. Also, continue visiting Seller University and keep an eye out for future webinars. We hope you enjoyed today's session and we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.